We are continuing our discussion on uh, marketing communication or rather the whole integrated marketing communication strategy, tactics and so on. We introduced in the previous session the concept of source stack that is starting with situation analysis and then setting marketing communication objectives, developing the communication strategy, out of that developing the tactical plan and then the deployment action and then control and feedback and take it back again to situation analysis and objective redefinition. That same SOSTA concept can be also seen with the how the different stages of the consumer decision making stage CDM as we have written here, consumer decision making stage while uh, purchase decision making stage and resulting into final purchase action. And how across those uh, the, the different parts of that decision making journey, marketing communication has to play different roles. So, this goes hand in hand with the SOSTAC principles and this is actually how you really develop your tactical plan and this is also part of your thinking framework when you do the situation assessment. So, we know that all purchases usually arise from the need perception. So, this is what this is the area what we call arousal. We write here arousal because even though as I said just now that in most cases it is it starts with the feeling of a need or perception of a problem. Of course, through the method of arousal we can also sometimes stimulate desire. It is another matter whether that is desired or not desired, whether that leads to over consumption or over marketing. But leaving that aside for a moment, it is important to note that marketing communication not only needs to respond to a felt need or articulated need, but it may also sometimes marketing communication need to address latent needs. So, not really whims or, uh, or, or, or pleasure triggers, but for better marketing Markom must recognize the need of addressing latent needs in the minds of the consumer. So, at this stage therefore, the Markham objective is uh, rooted in as we said there are three building blocks almost all Markham, Markham messages are based on those three building blocks which are information, persuasion and retention. So, in this arousal stage information and awareness creation are important roles that must be performed by the marketing communication um, rollout, marketing Markham actions. In the next stage when customer is in search of information that will meet that will solve that felt need or problem or you have been successful in addressing a latent need and the next stage therefore, you have to provide information as well as this is where the role of the customer advocacy plays a very important part because it can actually help us remove decision barriers and stimulate attraction towards our brand, our offering 
our reputation and so on. So, if we have been able to successfully do that, then in the evaluation stage, we will be able to differentiate ourselves, because that is the key role in the next stage, which is we call the evaluation stage. This is where we want to achieve differentiation and positioning advantage. And then we uh, go to the decision phase. And at that stage, of course, customer advocacy, word of mouth, the buzz, the community of customers all play extremely important part in managing that decision in your favor. And as we, as I said that there are those three building blocks of information, persuasion and retention. And as we have seen in the previous session, in the marketing communication, all messages, the role of persuasion remains central, but the relative position of information and retention changes over time. So, at the later stage therefore, the reinforcing messages, the relationship building messages become far more important. So, those retention oriented, uh, reminder oriented components of the Markham package becomes more important. And uh, because that is when we have to take care of the what we talk about the cognitive dissonance or the post consumption perception. Uh, which, which we want to exceed the pre-consumption expectation. And, and, and that is the role that has to be played by the Markham at these two final stages. Now, let us look at some financial issues, which are related to in the source stack, we talked about that after you have been able to deploy uh, your tactical plan, you need to uh, continuously uh, assess, control uh, the actions that are getting deployed. So, there are obviously, when you are trying to assess, evaluate how effectiveness, how effective is your marketing or what else can be done, the financial issues uh, become important. So, we will use uh, the same sort of uh, formulations that we had borrowed from Karen's book earlier like one of them will be make versus buy. That means, in this case, whether you want to uh, insource the marketing function or outsource the marketing function. 10 years back, outsourcing the marketing function was almost uh, never thought of, except in case of many B 2 B, where as we discussed earlier, the market channel management uh, uh, issues in B 2 B we have used agents, brokers and of course, even in B 2 C, a part of marketing or some people would say as we when we discuss the importance of retail marketing today, we discuss that in many ways today, the retailers have become uh, um, the customers agents rather than the sellers or marketers agents today. And uh, in, 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 in those scenarios, uh, there is a significant part of the marketing uh, effectiveness uh, come out of the that uh, effectiveness uh, comes from the uh, effectiveness of your distributors of your channel partners. But to what extent you will keep the marketing function within the company? through your own employees, through your own establishment and how much you will actually um, outsource through your channel partners or even marketing agencies uh, will depend on uh, some financial calculations. Uh, important issue is that when we look at normally this insourcing versus outsourcing make versus bite of the type of decisions. We only think in terms of that avoidance of fixed cost and moving to variable cost, which means that we actually uh, reduce the threshold of break even, uh, because as you know, we have to all take all the uh, fixed costs that we will be recovering through our margin. So, if we have 
low fixed cost our break even points will come down. And so, it is in, in a way de-risking the marketing effort particularly for a new product. But we cannot only look at this, this slide is only to remind that all the calculations that we are going to look at in the next few slides must be subjected to the qualitative considerations which are here on the right hand side all these behavioral dimensions. That means, that to the extent we have control over our marketing the flexibility, the availability all of these issues are to be seen in conjunction with the economic dimension. So, this behavioral or soft or organizational issues must be seen side by side with the economic issues to come to the final conclusion that to, to what extent you will insource your marketing communication uh, and outsource your marketing communication function. So, this is a simple calculation that at what sales level a company sales force cost more or less than an outsourced. So, it is a kind of a uh, break even analysis. So, as you see on the left hand side we have the 3 percent company sales force commission and salary and other things you know add up to 500,000. And uh, on the other side you have to give to the independent sales representatives may be brokers agents you may have to give 5 percent. So, then that means what is the value of x. So, obviously, we can achieve it by looking at this that means, commission into x because that is the sales value plus the salary and administration cost and on the other side we have commission into x because there is no salary and administration cost. So, 0.03 x plus 500,000 should be equal to 0 0.05 x and that means, that it is at 25 million if x is 25 million then we have that means, if it is less than that it, it is it is better to go for. So, that is the so, if your expected sales volume is more than 25 million then it may be worthwhile to use company sales force and if it is less than 25 million then you may need to use independent sales force. But as I said again that this is not always going to be true because you have to do this simple economic calculation, but subject it to the caveats of the behavioral side. For example, in case of a new product particularly if it is a radically new to the world type of product or service then it is far better to rely on uh, your own uh, sales force because the role of information and persuasion will be far higher. So, but, but in a in a steady state condition or in the middle of the life cycle um, when you are you have already hit the early majority uh, or, or when you are in the late majority condition this type of calculations may hold good. The other important point is uh, is, is quite well known uh, strategic uh, consideration in the marketing communication packaging is this whole area of push and pull. So, the when we look at the concept of channel then we know that the role of marketing in one sense is to push the offerings through the wholesalers through the retailers to the consumer. This slide explains that the success of your ability to push volume to push more and more obviously, that is the aim of all marketing function to increase your top line. But our ability to push more and more volume through the channel will depend on the pull that we have been able to create through our marketing communication across all different media. The pull that we have been able to create in the minds of the consumer because it is only when the consumer demands, prefers, seeks your offering from the marketplace. The retailers will then gladly stock display your products and offerings. So, 
the push strategy and the pull strategy they have to succeed simultaneously so that you are able to achieve your preferred position when this purchase decision is made. So, obviously, if you are not present on the shelf, you are not av available, your products are not available at the, at the retail outlet, then this will not succeed very well I am in, in the B 2 C context. But to achieve that prominent availability display, it is important to manage both the push side as well as the pull side. Now, the push and pull concept, earlier it was kind of uh, one could manage it on two different streams. So, there was a pull strategy created through the TV ads, through the print ads and so on. And there were of course, various kinds of push strategies through retailer incentives, distributors incentives, point of sale, uh, merchandising, displays, hoardings, posters um, and various types of incentive schemes. Uh, so, this is the way we usually managed uh, the push side rather than the pull, pull side. But today when we look at uh, the marketing deployment across multiple media, particularly the interactive media like a website, then both of these strategies in a way they have to kind of play together. So, websites today therefore, are both transactional, informational and the better websites are also relational. For example, at the Amazon website or many of the good Indian e-marketing websites like the Flipkart or uh, Jabong, it remembers your previous transactions, it remembers products that you looked at but did not buy, it remembers the combinations that you went for whether you bought two books and three CDs or you looked at luggage as well as sports shoes and some hiking gear and immediately comes up with other related suggestions which you will often appreciate. And this ability to derive information out of your transaction pattern and then create relational offerings, even sometimes suggesting that the people who bought this particular book also bought this book and this book and this book or people who looked at this type of luggage also looked at this and this type of luggage or people who looked at this mobile phone also looked at this computer or this tablet. These communications at the transaction point on the website derived out of your previous shopping pattern and delivered in a sort of uh, understated manner, not in a very on your face type of uh, intrusive uh, aggressive style. So, you are not they actually quietly come at the bottom of the page and not flashing images as happened earlier. So, we have understood now how to combine these three types of messages of taking the advantage of the information and persuasion and retention issues together. So, the marketing websites today actually deploy both the push strategy as well as the pull strategy simultaneously. So, it, it, uh, if, you, if you think conceptually that means, the products that you are looking for 
are placed in front of you efficiently, but at the same time the products you are not exactly looking for, but it may be latent in your mind. So, those latent needs can be very effectively addressed today through the use of this kind of in, in, integrated IMC and that, that also relies on this whole issue about C to C. So, you will see in most of these websites as I mentioned as Flipkart or Amazon or um, eBay and so on, they not only show you the other products that you had looked at before or you might be interested in, they also offer opinion from other customers which can reinforce that pattern. That means, this particular traveling bag goes with this kind of other luggage products or sunglasses or um, outdoor uh, hiking uh, equipment and so on. So, this form of using other customers opinion as a kind of advocacy for related offering are very powerful marketing communication possibilities today um, that will become more and more powerful because of the technologies that are getting developed. So, all those so called uh, location based marketing that means, you are at a particular place and your mobile phone when you are looking for restaurants might also give you suggestions with respect to movies or other entertainment outlets uh, and so on and uh, which we will discuss uh, in another session in more detail. Uh, but when we think about budgeting, so in communication mix budget, remember the communication mix means budgeting for advertising, budgeting for sales promotion, budgeting for uh, public relations activities, budgeting for direct marketing, uh, budgeting for exhibitions. Uh, so, all those different uh, blocks in the marketing communication mix that we saw in the previous session. Uh, there, uh, we have to decide the allocation not only depending on the life cycle stage of the product or not only based on whether it is a uh, radically new offering or it is a market penetration um, objective or it is a market development objective. Besides those, we know that the P's must be designed, the so called marketing mix elements must be decided with respect to the three C's the consumer, the competitor. So, here we are looking at that we must therefore, balance the competitive, competitive activities as well as the, the capabilities of our uh, people. So, competencies on uh, and uh, uh, resource availability must be balanced with competitor activities and to derive the final uh, mix. So, the budget allocation across television, radio, newspaper, outdoor hoardings, magazines, internet, these are the media selection. So, this media budget will therefore, depend on what kind of resources you have available, what are the competitive activities going on and what is the communication mix that you want to achieve uh, in terms of um, information, persuasion and retention. Uh, components in your messaging. So, the resource part, the competitive activity part and the message imperatives, the message mix um, will determine that how much fund allocation we can do. Obviously, as you can see the internet may be the, uh, the, the, the most economically efficient and uh, the television may be the most expensive or in some cases may be the outdoor may be also equally expensive, but most often uh, almost 99 percent cases the television these are the two extreme points this may be the most economic and uh, this may be the most expensive, but all of them they have a they have a role to play and uh, 
There are great examples how companies have succeeded, like from some of, some of the regional brands in detergent like Ghadi in northern India, primarily relied on uh, radio advertising. It has in fact started investing in television advertising very recently uh, and, and even then it is far subdued, but it relies heavily on its radio advertising, its outdoor advertising and through vernacular newspapers. And, and obviously, as it is you can clearly see that uh, a detergent, the internet may not be the right vehicle for the detergent. On the other hand, if it is a mobile phone, particularly if it is an expensive phone, then customer will be looking at lot of information to evaluate alternatives. So, the internet will be very important to help the customer with the rational elements or what we call the cognitive side of the behavior. Whereas, we need television ads or sometimes the magazine ads to support the affective part of the consumer behave buying behavior. So, having decided the bigs, one can look at also the uh, more detailed calculation uh, and that is uh, very easy to understand. We call it uh, cost, reach, frequency and audience. So, cost is usually cost per thousand readers or viewers, uh, so that we can compare uh, radio with television with uh, newspaper and so on. The reach that, that the number of buyers who can be potentially exposed, the frequency that means how many times uh, the buyers will actually be exposed and the uh, how the audience matches. Now, these calculations are useful, uh, we can do a, a different kind of calculation, but before that here we can look at these elements, but one has to understand that in most of these media the numbers are estimated, one can only go by sort of proxy figures. That means, if we are looking at a magazine then we will look at its circulation but it does, does not necessarily mean that all that number, all the people who subscribe to that magazine will be your potential buyers. So, one has to then go into the deeper analysis of the uh, that how the characteristics of their subscribers. Um, so, if you are actually uh, trying to uh, promote a new um, aftershave lotion through a print ad, then obviously one has to see to what extent uh, that particular magazine uh, has. Uh, so, it, so, if it is a magazine which is on um, male fashion like GQ, then that that is the right vehicle, uh, but in all these there are exceptions. I will not go into that much of detailed discussion, because there are people who also the men who read women's fashion magazines are also quite a few. So, that is why you will you should not be surprised if you find some aftershave lotion ads in women's fashion magazines. But the key point here is that these numbers the cost per thousand readers whether that those thousands are really your potential buyers or not these are on one will have to do some probabilistic calculations uh, to uh, derive the budget allocation, uh, but it is in, in, in the other case like for example, this is another interesting uh, kind of calculation which in B 2 B marketing communication we have to often do like how many sales people uh, we will need because that is the uh, um, that is the budget part of marketing communication uh, in, in uh, complex products in business to business 
selling as we discussed right in the beginning. And uh, then we go through this kind of uh, calculation that is the number of sales representatives will be found out by if there are 2500 because in B2B we can identify the customers. If we are making steering columns then we know uh, then yeah, the, the customers are our India's truck manufacturers, uh, car manufacturers. So, you will have 7, 10, 12, 15 potential customers and within those customer organizations there may be number of people to call upon. So, if there are 2500 people who need to be addressed uh, and uh, if there are 4 customer calls per year. So, then 2500 into 4 and uh, 2 hours average call and then in a year roughly there are about 1340 hours uh, which you can calculate by the number of working days and number of working hours per person leaving out the holidays and so on. So, then if you divide that by 1340 then you can see that you need 15 sales representatives. Now, which is to highlight the fact that this calculation could be far more accurate compared to this calculation because this is these numbers the cost reach frequency audience uh, of, uh, of the kind of media that we looked at uh, will not be as deterministic as the kind of numbers we are looking at here. To conclude therefore, that uh, the marketing communication budgeting uh, has to always balance uh, some probabilistic issues like as we discussed here, some soft issues and hard issues as we discussed that means, the economic dimensions, the numbers, the costs that can be calculated and the factors that cannot be so accurately calculated, but some cost and benefit can be achieved, uh, can be evaluated. These uh, the hard side and the soft side, the deterministic and the probabilistic elements need to be considered together and similarly, the push and the pull strategies need to be uh, considered together uh, to finally, create uh, the marketing communication budget and, and the decision about uh, media mix and the decision about the communication mix and uh, overall the so stuck that is that uh, situation analysis, uh, objective setting, strategy formulation, tactical deployment, action and assessment and control. Those elements then can be seen in conjunction with the uh, circular diagram that we presented right in the beginning of this presentation. The so stuck and this taken together and remembering that you have to evaluate always the deterministic numbers with the probabilistic issues, the hard side with the soft side, you can create a good marketing communication strategy. So, we have been discussing about uh, integrated marketing communication. We have discussed the different forms of integrated market communication like advertising, sales promotion, public relations, direct marketing, personal selling. And we earlier alluded to internet as uh, a form of uh, channel for marketing communication as one of these, but in some respect actually. Uh, the impact of internet particularly uh, the hybrid form or the blended form of internet with other uh, ICT or information communication technologies like um, call store and forward or uh, machine based uh, interactive voice response system etcetera all of this put together actually 
uh, can create a quite a powerful uh, almost new format uh, for marketing communication and that is why uh, today we have a short session to supplement our earlier discussions on integrated marketing communication which we are calling digitally uh, integrated marketing communication. Now, the key point here why enhancement uh, of marketing communication by using technologies such as text multimedia and integrating that with databases and data mining and also on the other hand social media formats like blogs or uh, uh, and, uh, and all of that. The reason why it is creating a completely new paradigm for marketing communication is for these two major factors. One is this um, uh, almost uh, integrative uh, uh, exponential power created by the interactivity and individualization. So, the interactivity and individualization we will see how it happens uh, I I in a short while uh, creates an opportunity for continuing conversation and therefore, uh, to achieve the strategic marketing goal of long term relation and uh, customer advocacy uh, and, and, and therefore, the power of uh, internet uh, is uh, not only uh, just as uh, a, an alternative channel, but in some respect it actually uh, creates a, a, a almost new uh, format. If we look at this diagram, it kind of tells us that if we make a 2 by 2 matrix that here we have online and offline and here for example, we put uh, mass uh, communication and on this side we, we put individualized communication. In that case as you can see here online individualized communication will mean uh, some very powerful new formats uh, starting from a little older, but still uh, a very widely used and very powerful is this email, but not a simple email which is like a mass uh, email which in fact in some respect is not very effective because as you know there are various kinds of protection against spamming. So, uh, this mass email which is unsolicited email is what we call a spam and that uh, consumers can actually block that with the technology that is available. But on the other hand an email that is actually sent in response to your request or in a, as a part of your registration process with a particular website uh, what we call uh, sort of uh, permission marketing that means an email which has been sent with your um, uh, explicit uh, acceptance uh, sometimes may be tacit ex, uh, acceptance that is when you have registered for some information and you have provided your email id. So, but it is in a kind of a tacit acceptance, but most sites today ask for your specific permission that yes you are ready to receive their messages not only related to your request, but even uh, um, a mail from their associates or mails that are related. For example, you might have asked for information for a particular book or for a particular report or for uh, information on a new uh, mobile phone that will be released soon on uh, Flipkart, uh, but at the same time you might have actually already accepted that similar uh, new market launches or similar um, uh, books when they are released etcetera, they, uh, the, the marketer will be permitted to uh, send you a mail. That is what we call an, a, a response type of email or permission marketing oriented email and that is extremely uh, useful because it is a very precise uh, communication and that can often generate continuing conversation what we were discussing just now and, and therefore, it can be the basis of a long term relation. The other one which is also a, as a, is, is an extremely powerful uh, marketing tool today which we call customer to customer or consumer to consumer or C to C uh, viral marketing. This is actually uh, the online form of the word of mouth publicity and that again is individual to individual communication very powerful online. So, this is actually 
the domain that uh, attracts most of our attention, the most effective format in this whole uh, domain of digital integrated or digitally integrated marketing communication. Of course, we have the traditional um, offline uh, uh, the mass communication like hoardings and newspapers and magazines which are slightly on this side because it is a bit uh, individualized because magazines can be targeted to a particular audience it can be so what we call trade magazines uh, so in the f uh, in place of uh, say b2b marketing we can have a, uh, a magazine that is dedicated for uh, electro electrical automation and control products so in that magazine called control and automation will then have uh, almost uh, individualized subscription so that will be uh, more effective than say advertising in a newspaper for a specialized products. So, there are other formats of specialized uh, uh, magazines uh, for uh, say uh, bath and light or uh, home decoration and so on and so forth or travel magazine. Uh, so, they kind of move from this side to that side a little bit and uh, individualized offline examples will be telemarketing uh, which uh, often is actually because many times they are unsolicited unsolicited calls and in fact uh, many consumers block such calls they are almost equivalent to spamming they can be also nowadays mass uh, or bulk sms that is sent out that also is frowned upon but it could be also uh, uh, marketing uh, telephone call from a uh, mobile service provider or your bank uh, whom you might like or your credit card uh, so, direct mail telemarketing are formats of individualized offline and that you, you can clearly see that compared to the individualized offline communication, uh, these online formats of those that we have just described can be far more powerful. Of course, on online we have also examples of uh, mass communication or mass advertising, are, those are the banner ads that you see when you are actually uh, going to the Economic Times website or the website of Business Standard or other uh, Times of India and other uh, newspapers and magazines. Uh, at that, you know, you can see some banner ads on top or something that uh, crawls across or something that pops up. Uh, again, those are uh, not as effective uh, as, uh, as these. And of course, uh, something that is uh, becoming more and more powerful because technologies are developing in that direction is what we call search. Uh, to begin with uh, search engines are actually uh, an example of uh, mass communication online, but uh, they have the power of more and more moving people from this segment to this segment and that is why uh, this is becoming. So, you can at actually uh, uh, attract a, a large number of people and that is why we will just discuss that uh, why uh, Google AdSense has become so powerful and so remunerative. So, so the best and worst performance uh, digitally integrated marketing communication tactics. Uh, this is actually a uh, well published comparison uh, and as you can see here the there is a comparison that means paid search are, 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 are seen as very powerful uh, or email which is actually uh, from a permitted list uh, what is called house list is again uh, a, so as you can see dark is worst in uh, in the opinion of people who have responded and best. So, the best actually this uh, opted for email uh, search engine optimization these are some very very powerful ones. On the other hand as you can see here uh, banner ads are uh, considered as quite ineffective or email which is from a rented list or you know that means uh, almost that comes like spamming um, unrelated emails those are considered as as, as bad or, or or ads in email newsletters not very effective. So, as you can see here from this to this you can see all the different types of digitally integrated marketing communication and uh, they we have this uh, search engine optimization behavioral targeting contextual targeting we will discuss these ideas a little bit more. Affiliate marketing also can be quite effective that means, when you are looking at something on Flipkart website and you may be looking at a, a, a book 
but it can be an example of related product marketing. And affiliate marketing means that you are actually on Economic Times website. You may be looking at a particular news at the same time which relates to the weather in um, or, or some incidents that is there in Kerala. But at the same time, we can uh, ET might allow the Kerala tourism to uh, at that time beam uh, or communicate and add to you about promoting Kerala tourism. Uh, uh, so this is something like affiliate marketing and occasion based marketing or contextual marketing and uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, all of that. So let's go one by one. Uh, keyword search is this is obviously the fastest growing and very important technique because it allows us as uh, somebody who has come to us from a spray and pray um, uh, communication to bring a uh, very targeted communication. So it allows us to move um, uh, uh, a customer from this segment to this segment uh, to develop long term relationship. And uh, uh, display ads are uh, the second large, uh, largest and, and I have some interesting statistics. For example, in India in 2009, the total spend on internet uh, these kinds of uh, display ads that means both traditional banners and many other uh, formats like rectangles, pop-ups, banners, buttons, all these kind of ads on internet, the total spend was 450 crores. Against that, uh, the spend on TV ads was 10,000 crores. So as you can see, it was almost uh, more than uh, 20 times. Uh, that means the ad spend on internet was still nascent. But look at the figure in 2012. In 2012, the spend on uh, internet ad has come almost like 870, say 900 crores, which means it actually has doubled, almost doubled compared to the 2009. So in, in, in uh, sorry, this figure is for 2011. So just in two year time, the 450 crore almost reached 900 crores in case of internet ads and against that the TV ad spend uh, climbed from 10,000 crores to 11,000 crores. So even though TV ads continue to be a much bigger um, engagement area but as you can see uh, it is almost in case of uh, internet ad the spend is doubling almost every two years and whereas in the other case it rose. Uh, just by about 15% uh, or 10% over two years. So, uh, so in time, it is expected that because of the power of this uh, interactivity and individualization, which creates long term conversation uh, and that power is therefore uh, causing this rapid rise uh, in internet ad spend. Because even when people are using this banner ads, or floating ads, etc. There are opportunities there. We, we have because of this uh, rich media and various kinds of animation techniques, etc. that can be used. You can attract the uh, customer's attention and, and the customer may click on it and which can actually then take the customer more towards this segment and, and, and therefore uh, a more interactive um, uh, possibilities. Contextual ads. Uh, again, we are very you know, familiar with this today because of Google's AdSense. That means if I am actually searching for information on uh, philosophy and then uh, the uh, AdSense will uh, in that context show me on the right hand side uh, either um, some uh, books on Aristotle because I might have been looking at um, uh, Aristotle's philosophy as applicable to marketing or management. And at the same time, it can promote to me uh, maybe some, uh, depending on the text that I am looking at, uh, it might even uh, show me some tourism development um, uh, promotion um, ads uh, from Greece or, um, or depending on the context, it can actually uh, can very powerfully use this keyword search and kind of use some kind of what we call a mapping technique and it can show us many different related, closely related and somewhat distantly related. And as we progress through the search, as we click out of many 
options that are or many results that are displayed in Google. We click on a particular one to read more, immediately you will see on the right hand side uh, the contextual ads will be changing. So, this is uh, the power that as customer branches out and goes on a deeper search, you can actually create more and more refined contextual searches. So, it is another great example of how we are moving people from this left quadrant to the right quadrant. Email advertising as I mentioned can be uh, if it is opted in uh, it can be very powerful uh, that means if it is permission oriented or if it is actually out of your house list that means your subscriber list suppose uh, you are um, uh, one of the members of say uh, SBI credit card um, uh, uh, group and uh, so if you get mail from SBI credit card giving you some additional offers uh, allowing you to become a member of the priority uh, club or something like that, then that is something that is quite effective. On the other hand, if you get a completely unsolicited email which has no meaning for you and it, it might be just coming out of some list that somebody has purchased, then that advertising is maybe very inexpensive, but it can be quite ineffective as well. So, so when it is a direct marketing which is based on your permission or your uh, interest, then it can be uh, almost a, a conversation and it, it actually is not mass advertising. It becomes much better uh, communication channel uh, because it is coming on this side. Similarly, mobile internet uh, as it is rapidly penetrating. Um, is giving us different new possibilities like this location based ads, uh, which means that if I am in the vicinity of a, a marketplace, then it can actually start sending me ads which are related to um, uh, stores that are available nearby, the restaurants that are available nearby. And uh, this with a little bit more data based uh, data mining uh, technique can be very powerful. Uh, it is uh, available now in many cities in Europe. That means, if you are from India and you are uh, roaming around in say Pompeii and uh, which is a relatively smaller uh, town compared to Rome and uh, you are from India, but as uh, your telephone is on roaming mode and uh, the local uh, mobile phone service will recognize that your sim originates from India and it can actually use that data and uh, based on your location it starts showing you the uh, that where you can find Indian restaurant in Pompeii. And this is a very powerful uh, facility of course and in many cases the customer can actually ask in fact, as soon as you land it is available right now in India. If your phone is on roaming mode, as soon as you land in Ahmedabad, you will get a message saying that call this number for anything that you want to know uh, about Ahmedabad. So, if you are in the evening looking for a restaurant which can uh, serve you Italian food in Ahmedabad, you can actually get send an SMS to that number and you can get. Uh, so, it is a little bit. Um, uh, a deviation from the automated location based ads. This is using uh, a push, uh, not a push format, but a pull format. Customer is pulling for that information and very precise um, promotion uh, messages can then be sent across to you and can be uh, very useful. So, this is a form of a paid search and, and uh, it is quite useful today. This shows you that uh, some, uh, some return on investment and these numbers uh, can be you know different in different places, these are, but this is just to indicate that the scale at which you, you know you can, you can save money. So, your net cost in case of postal mail will be 3000 rupees as against a, a net cost of 800 rupees. Uh, these numbers may be different, but the scale will not change. That means, your, your expense uh, using a email uh, list for, a, for, for mailing out can be 
uh, almost uh, 20 percent, 25 percent. Of course, the other interesting thing is that in case of a postal direct mail, the response rate has always been very low, but in case of uh, email it can be even lower, but uh, if we see the finally uh, the numbers, this number can be further improved if we have an automated system for follow up and for uh, reminders, uh, which is kind of uh, expensive to implement in case of a postal mail, but can be quite easy uh, in case of email, it can be even done without human intervention to send out a gentle reminder automated after 15 days if there has been no response to that mail. In email as we were discussing and in general obviously, the opt in option that means, when the consumer give you permission to receive an email and uh, that can become a very powerful and it, it is not easy of course, but it is possible to buy from uh, lists where you can have 100 percent opt in. This is because uh, when you say subscribe to a credit card or you subscribe to a new magazine uh, over the internet, then you might agree like for example, uh, when I have subscribed to Harvard Business Review, I have agreed uh, and I have given permission that their affiliates can send me email uh, showing me the uh, offers on new books or uh, publications in the areas of my interest like marketing or strategy and so on. And uh, um, in that case, the mailing list that is generated by uh, Harvard Business School Press from people who have given them this permission, then that permission is equivalent to creating a mailing list which is 100 percent opt in. Uh, opt in strategies part of a bigger marketing op philosophy today which is permission marketing which is very important today because this that indicates that you are moving people from this stranger segment uh, quadrant to uh, a, a, a familiar or related customer segment. So, this permission market marketing particularly because of this digital era where it is very tempting for people to spam or send out mass text messages and so on. Uh, the customers are uh, forcing marketers to uh, give a much higher importance uh, to this uh, whole form of uh, uh, permission marketing. And then permission marketing leads to often um, viral marketing, where the word of mouth publicity uh, creates a buzz. Uh, great example is Hotmail, which uh, uh, people came to know about it, this free email service through friends and relatives and, and it just spread worldwide. Uh, there is uh, also uh, many other examples uh, around the world. Uh, it, there has been uh, examples in India, Europe, USA and, and many more new examples are always coming in how powerful viral marketing uh, can be like the entrepreneurship society which was created here at IIT Kanpur uh, using the viral marketing technique. It actually solicited and uh, got uh, members from all around and, and, and became a very powerful platform with a very minimal expense. Um, location based uh, marketing we just discussed that. So, uh, there are some metrics that we should use uh, to measure all of these and those metrics are we can, we can easily make this calculation like in a study of SMS campaign uh, that how many percentage of SMSs were actually read by recipients, how many of them forwarded that message to a friend. This uh, the mobile phone service companies can easily track. Similarly, we can do that for email and these are some metrics that we can use that how on the IDA progression we have moved from awareness to sort of interest and, and then of course, we have to use other techniques to find out that uh, whether that led to purchase action. So, that is kind of uh, our brief uh, add on to the earlier discussion on integrated marketing communication mainly to show you that the uh, introduction of the digital technology actually uh, creates completely new paradigms. Uh, so, it is not only 
just add of internet as a another channel of marketing communication, but it is more and more becoming a new uh, mm, uh, form of um, marketing communication integration because it uh, because of the power of uh, what we call interactivity and individuality individualization of the message we can create a continuing conversation which can become the bedrock of relationship marketing. Thank you.